What's up, guys? It's Adika here, and I am here with Michael and Steve today. Both of them are here. Yo. Hello. I'm a disembodied voice today. <laughs> yes, the very rare occasion where Steve becomes a disembodied voice. We haven't had that happen a lot. But yep. Yeah, we're here for another tier list. This time we are doing... Uh, Keaki Zaka and Sakura Zaka uh, singles tier list. We decided to combine the two since, you know, they're essentially the same group. So, yep. So, yeah, we have this, this tier list we made um, ourselves, actually. Our resident Michael made this yeah. uh, specifically for today's video. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll just go ahead and get started with uh, the first single in our lineup, which is, of course, uh, Silent Majority. It's iconic. Do I really think it deserves to be an S? I do not know. Hmm. I kind of maybe have to agree. I think for me, I would put this in amazing, in the amazing category, personally. Just mm. how iconic it is. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's one of the scariest songs. No, yeah, I would definitely great. agree with that sentiment because, yeah, it was. it's definitely iconic. And, you know, as this, them putting this out as, like, their debut, showing, like, how... How, you know, like, Keaki Zaka was a very different group with a very different concept when they first came out. So it made sense okay. that they went with something that was, like, very bold and very different. And also, also very poignant lyrics, as Keaki Zaka has done a lot with their lyrics, are often mm. very powerful and often very topical. So yeah, I definitely would agree. Put this in the amazing yeah. category. Plus, it set the tone of the group right away of what they were trying yeah. to do exactly mm. exactly so next up we have sekai ni wa ai shika nai so <laughs> uh, i was about to say like talking to other people about the song they some people personally don't like it but for me it's one of my personal favorite songs Mm -hmm. Again, inside the mm -hmm. majority, do I think it deserves the top tier? No, not necessarily. If we were doing singles as a whole, then maybe I would put it up there. But just as a A side. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, ah, uh, like Sekai wa Ashkenai is not one of my favorite songs. To me, I just personally think it's a nice song. It's actually, if I have to be honest, like I like the majority of all Keaki Zaka songs before I went into Sakura Zaka. So <laughs> most of my opinions are either probably going to be amazing superior, except for like a very few. Um, and this is just one of the songs that for me personally, I don't feel as much I as the others. Yeah. So, for me personally, nice. So, I what I'd would have you think? to I'd have to agree simply because it's not one of their standout songs. Like I like it, but it's not one of their standout songs. So I I agree with nice to be honest. Okay, I find it interesting you both are on that front because I've talked about it before on the channel, but. Sekai ni wa Aishika Nai is one of my personal favorites of their 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 lead singles of their A-sides. Because you like with with me with my personal preference for listening to idol music, I like songs like this that are very bright and have very hopeful sounding lyrics to it. But but I can right. get where you guys are coming from, where it's like compared to some of their other stuff, it may not be like an immediate standout. But I still really really love the song, so I'm willing to to meet in the middle and put it at the top of the nice category. Also also going off on a side tangent for a bit, but I loved the English rendition that Gotorada sang during the <laughs> SKE solo concert. Oh, I, I, right. I, yeah. I loved that. Kotorada did do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kotorada <laughs> did that. 
<laughs> I remember Yunana doing a cover of Silent Majority as well. Like, god damn, that feels so long ago. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think it has. Mm-hmm. So yeah, next up uh, we have Futari Sezon. So how do we I... feel about this one? A side and the single as a whole, I really one of my favorites, but not my favorite favorite. <laughs> so I <laughs> hmm. I don't know where to put it. Yeah, it's kind of hard for me because like I every time I listen to Futari Sezon, like I'm always I always get really happy while listening to this song. <laughs> so maybe just like musical preference because obviously as you guys know like the kind of genre of music that i like <laughs> when yes. it comes to idols is a lot different <laughs> than maybe <laughs> your guys's <laughs> <laughs> so for me i would probably put it close to maybe like an in-between of amazing and nice for me personally i feel like it does Go above Sekai and Yuai Shinai. I I agree with that wholeheartedly. Ah, uh, you guys think so? <laughs> I I agree, but I don't think it's uh, it's on the same tier as Silent Majority. But like, I don't think so either. That's the problem. Mm. <laughs> no, yeah, I think I think that would be a good middle ground because I do I would personally put it on the near the same level as Sekai and Yuai Shinai rather than Silent Majority. So yeah, we'll just we'll put that in the nice category here with uh, Sekai Niwa Ashikanai here. Oh. So next up we have uh, Fukyo Waon Discord. <laughs> well, I, I guess have... right off the bat. Oh, no, sorry, Mike, you go. No, no, you go first. Okay, so for me, easily superior. This is my favorite song. <laughs> Mm-hmm. of Keakizaka of all time. And then also, just single-wise, it also has Eccentric, which is my second favorite Keakizaka <laughs> Eccentric song. Eccentric is a good one! So, Eccentric's a good one. So, even though <laughs> Fukuyoyon is my favorite song, it also has my second favorite song, single-wise, <laughs> so it's easily yeah. superior, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> I kind of agree with that. And, like, the single as a whole is, kind of, is really powerful, not just the A side, but like even to this day, I sometimes sing "What at the Small Hole" in in the shower, and this is like I don't even have this song on my phone anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> wasn't it wasn't it either around like Futari Sezon or Fukio Wan? Wasn't it somewhere around this time where Hiragana Kiyakizaka became a thing yep. and they started doing B sides for this? Yeah, because yeah. one of the coupling songs is Double of Kiyaki. Yeah. 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 Plus, I'm looking at some of the other. Oh, it was it was Sezon first actually with Daratobe. Then it, then the two groups kind of had Double Kiyaki and fourth single. Ah, oh, right, right, right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Like, there's Bokutatsu wa Tsukiyateiru as well, and, and Wareta yeah. Smartphone, Aozora Mary. I mean, they've been a unit since second single. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Aoz- Aozora Tachigao and Wareta Smartphone. Those are, those are both really, really <laughs> good songs. And during Mugus' graduation concert, just her and Yuka performing Aozora Tachigao. Aozora just the two broke my heart, man. Plus, mm. yeah, kind of what we were talking about with Silent Majority, too, how we talked about how it set set the standard for what Kiyakizaka was, was going to be. You know, like, Fukyo Wan, I feel like, really solidified that. I feel like Fukyo Wan was the peak of Kiyaki as well. Like, yes, they personally had that the singles after Yes. Mm, mm, mm. The only, the, the only sad thing is that this was 
what I consider the beginning of the end of Keiaki's Yeah, in a way, yeah. you could, you could yeah. take that both ways. That, like, yes, it solidified the group's image for being a very powerful, darker type of group, but you could also take that in the bad way. It's because of this, they started to stick to that image a bit too strongly, and especially yeah. with pushing well, Tetchi the wouldn't way say, that they did. So. I wouldn't say image is just management just forcing Techi after this mm -hmm. I think this if single you watch, if the list like the watchers out there watch the documentary you can kind of see how Techi centered it was and you can tell like from especially the first generation from this point of view it kind of felt like that like management was forced to Techi to run the show and mm. it was just the other members were her back dancers, and that it was kind of unfortunate that it came to that. Mm. And I digress. I digress. But yeah, yeah. The yeah. song just gets me really pumped up every time I listen to it. And I mm. love love it so much. Yeah, it, it <laughs> definitely is a good song to get you pumped, especially especially just whenever you hear the members screaming that line, "Boku Ayada." Boku Ayada. <laughs> even even like when you know other groups have covered it you know it's like you still get yeah. that impact of like like dang this song but it's not as hard hitting as the original but you know what i mean oh yeah i understand what you mean but like even when other members center it like the guy i think it was just the guy who sent it like it just it's hard. It's mm -hmm. harder. I agree with Steve. It deserves to go up there. <laughs> it deserves oh, to yeah. go up there. Definitely. S rank. Alright, so oh, next up after that, we have Kazeni Fkaretemo. Okay, I'm gonna uh, like confess right here. I may be biased because this was my first single release as a Kaki fan. Um, so I really want to put it in amazing. Then again, the song may not appeal to most people, but yes, mm. the aesthetic of the music video, girls in suits. Yeah, yes, 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 Michael, I completely <laughs> agree with you. Them in the suits, yes. Listen, listen, <sighs> it's just. It doesn't matter if it's male or female. Idol in suits, there's some kind of power behind that. Something about it. Oh, that's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just biased. But I, I understand. No, but yeah, I I, I like Kazanif Karetemo too. I would, I would honestly argue to put it maybe at the top of nice. Hmm. I agree. I, I'm, I'm able to like give solid middle back here. I, I, I love it. And then for me personally, I'm sorry to say, but this is my least favorite of the main single songs. <laughs> to be honest, you are not the first person I've heard I <laughs> I just don't like it. So I'm definitely willing to go on the middle ground of putting it into nice, hmm. but just personally, not my favorite. <laughs> Okay, okay. So yeah, we'll put it we'll put it here in the nice category. I still remember the memes that came out of this <laughs> though. Idol Those Jesus. were top Idol Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> the Idol Do you know Jesus. the way? The, that the Do you know the way meme <laughs> that was attached to Touch Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it was funny as that no, that was top tier memeing. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> all right, all right. Next up, we have uh, Garasu Oware. Gar Garasu Oware is a really good one, too. I'm going to admit, Garasu Oware as a song was mid tier. Not the best, <laughs> not the worst. <laughs> a lot of people would disagree. But I think. The only safe and grace for me was when Tetsu, no offense to Tetsu fans, 
gonna make this clear. I did like I do like Tetchy still. Of course, we love Tetchy. But, we all love Tetchy here. But I think the saving grace for God of Water for me was when other members ended up centering in her absence. Oh. Honestly, yeah. I get what you mean. The Yuri Chancer double center made it more powerful. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was that was awesome. Not because I'm I've become a sent from Batsuma and end on. Plus like plus a... like you remember that one performance where I think it was Yui who centered it or like someone but like someone you could hear them like during the the breakdown when the guitar was shredding, you could hear that member like screaming people's names. Didn't Habu center names? the song? No, it was the when... next single. <laughs> ah. Um, I know Pong centered it, and there was one performance where you could hear her scream. I don't think she screamed members' names. That was during last live. I'm fairly certain. See, that's why I was thinking, cause, cause if it was during last live and she was screaming the other members' names of like, I don't know. I thought, I thought I saw someone say like they were hearing her screaming other members' names of like members who had already left. Ooh, like I think, I think okay. someone said they thought they heard her scream Hirate. Uh, maybe. I could be wrong, but like, still, dang, that performance. I think it was at the point of like the dark times of COVID where you could really see the members shine, like no matter what song. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Something about Garo that it doesn't hit right with me <laughs> as much as like go on. But I still like the song. No, I really, really like it, too. And again, that's another one that I've seen, like... That's another one I remember that, like, SKE did for one of their concerts as well. And, like, that performance was really cool, too. Wait, who sent it that from SKE? Was it... Wait, all I remember is Pikyoan. I want to say it was now. Furuhata now. I think it was now. I, it, think... I would make oh, sense now. Would... Yeah, it would make sense. I would, I would either put it at like top of nice or bottom of amazing. Uh, for me personally, I would put it in amazing. I love the rockish nature no, of the yeah, song. The, the rock it also, of it, I love it too. It I'll, also I'll gets me one. really pumped up too, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I like trying to sing along, try along <laughs> to the song. Um, and then also. There's a little something personal, personally to me as well, because during the time at um, Nanzan for my idol dancing group circle, right, right. Uh, this is one of the songs that they performed oh. during their lives. And during practices, because I went to their practices and watched them practice their dancing or whatever, it just made me realize how hard of a song this is to actually dance to. Mm. <laughs> So just knowing that as well, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would definitely say it's an amazing song. Yeah. Okay. For a little gonna, anecdote for me. I'm just going to say this now. Like, with a lot of their choreography, like, these girls have a lot of stamina. That, that is very have. true. That is very, very on, true. I'll get onto this when we get to the Sakuras of the songs, but, like, them performing... And Nagaragama one after the other. Mm. <laughs> you really need so much energy for that. Especially for like the Sakura 8 girls who were there the entire time. It's like, right, 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 right. Anyway, I digress. Are we putting this in amazing? Because I cannot accept it going into amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll put it in amazing. All right, next up, ambivalent. I know from what I've heard with opinions being heard is that, granted this pun, this song is very ambivalent. 
to fans. <laughs> Oh, you mean I when it comes to their to the song? Is that what you mean? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, sorry, am, yes. I am one of those fans. Like, I know I keep going back to singles as a whole. You know, I know we're doing A-sides only. But I think... What the... Like... It wasn't very memorable for me, personally. <laughs> Just personally. I think the only reason why I'd go back to and the Reading for this all was for you guys it was that song. That's it. But, yeah. <clears throat> personally to me, I like Ambivalent. <laughs> but I'm willing to... I'm willing to put it on the top of nice, personally. Hmm. Because I do like it more than Cousin Ifu could hit them all. Um, but that's just me. <laughs> I'd um, be willing to make it except I would accept that. Yeah, now, I'd what probably... do you think of the song? I'd, I'd probably put it there too because yeah i do i do like it all right but maybe not over like certain other songs in kayaki's lineup so yeah top of nice seems like a fair middle ground so next up oof Kuroi Hitsushi. <laughs> okay I, like okay for a single as a whole i would put it in superior just because you can end game of Right, but <laughs> um, just the song. I'd put it. I'd put it. To be honest, I don't know. The hard, I like the hard hitting ballads. You count it as ballad. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. For me, I would put this into superior, <laughs> for just personally. <laughs> Even no, though it is a I very think... depressing song, I still yeah. really love this song. I think this song, plus nobody, plus Hiro no Takasa, which is the Yukonen song. Yes, I'd agree. But the song on its own, do I think it should be there? I don't know. Like, because it's at least amazing. That's for sure. Yeah, I agree. It's at least amazing, but mm -hmm. personally, Superior. Wherever you want to put this. I'm and fine. I like how it just ends up going to Rikka every single time. <laughs> <laughs> I am the one with the mouse. No, but yeah, Not only that. I, I definitely this song get also had impact from, cause like, outside mm. the group as well. As we mm. all know of that one situation mm. in yep, the 48G. NGT, yeah, yep. Maho, yeah, that Maho. that performance, oh my goodness, her performance of that. Oh, that hit really hard. Uh huh, uh huh. Yeah, the the fact that it could be relevant to that situation as well is just like ooh, a whole a whole nother level. But yeah, Kuroi Hitsuji, I I do agree. This is definitely an an amazing song and. The music video as well, like there was there was so much you could pick a part of that of like just Techi going around by herself, kind of walking as like almost like a ghost through all of these different moments, seeing other people and the other members, like what what they're all sort of going through, all these different struggles that they are portraying as these characters, and then ending it w with her like at the very very end, like in a in a way, even though, you know, they weren't really intending for this to be, like, you know, like, close to a send- Because, obviously, we did get a send-off, you know, final single with Dareka Sono Kane o Narasno Ka, which we'll talk about in a bit. But the fact that, in an essence, like, this song was kind of, like, we'll say one of the first, like, full send-off songs for- for this group to be to be kind of the bookend in a way of like where we started with silent majority and then how we got to here and then everything else that the group has been through up to this point 
because mm-hmm. because we definitely you know we've seen you know when members have talked about this song like on on their variety shows as well we know how much this song personally means to a lot of the members even before this was this this wasn't before they announced that they were going to be a rebranding as Sakura Zaka. You you saw how much this song meant to the members for them to be doing this. So also I think with the second gens just coming like it's been like a couple of years since the second gens have come along. Mm-hmm. And few of them ended up having to perform Kuroitsuji as like as a members, like the ones who have left, for example. I think with that being said, I think I'll get into it with that I got it, but to see the resilience of the new seven was just having to be there for the sake of being there, you know? Mm. Like they were literally villains for like members who have left and members who weren't there for like a long time. Mm. It just shows their resilience, I guess. And I think for a lot for a lot of them now has paid off. Now that they've after off. And I think seeing them form strategy third anniversary live kind of is proof of that as well. And as we said, mm-hmm. yeah. And with that being said, I kind of agree I should go if you guys want to go on the three whole five of you. I would, I'm going to say I personally want to put this at, like, bottom of superior right here. Right. Alright, so, last up for the Keaki side, before we transition into Sakurazaka, we have Dare ga sono kane o narasu no ka. So, this being, like, the the big, like, this being the official, like, send-off for the group. This is the final song that they did as Keaki Zaka. And the the fact that this song, like, essentially we got four, like, rotating centers for this, like, multiple centers for this. Okay, technically there was no center at all. Well, I remember, mm-hmm. I remember Yuka saying it, but yes, when you look at the performance, it looks like it's a Rotating quad center of like Yukin and then like a Mm hmm. Uh, for me, I really have no opinion on the song because, if I have to be honest, I only listened to the song uh, one time. <laughs> so <laughs> I really have no opinion. So it's just up to you two of how you want to rank this. <laughs> Uh, you first, because I have a lot to say about the song. Like, I can't. <laughs> well, let's see. There was when this song like first came out, when they like first performed it after they had announced that they were going to uh, stop promoting as Kiaki Zaka and like rebrand themselves. The first performance that we got on this, I remember there was like a comment, like either on YouTube or Twitter, that talked about. I I can't remember the exact details of it, but essentially what the comment boils down to was is that they took the best elements of all eight of their previous singles Mm. and put all of those elements into this song. song, Like, like this single, this final single essentially feels like just a culmination of all of Keakizaka's history up to this point, is basically what they were saying. At least that's how I felt. And I can definitely see where they were coming from, because, yeah, I feel like a lot of those really strong elements that were seen in, like, in each of the singles, what made each of those good and what made each of them stand out in their own unique way are all felt in this song. Going with what you 
saying there. I think they, Takahiro Sensei, who was probably the choreographer for the song, I think as you can clearly see who took elements of like each of the choreographers side and put it into the better kind of choreography. And I think that helps kind of make it hit home, I guess. Mm-hmm. And I'm a bit biased because time I was a more reaction looking. <laughs> <laughs> and but I agree. I think out of all the singles, personally, this is the one I keep going back to. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. Considering the history of what happened to Jackie, they were meant to release a single, but they actually went through a bunch of members left. Just didn't feel the same. Yeah. Uh, I just don't really like the song. So. I don't know. I feel like I would I want to put it in amazing. But. <laughs> I mean, that's where, that's where I would want to put it to. Like, bottom of amazing, maybe? Not, like, it has more power than Battle Water, in my opinion. It's mm. not like on the side middle. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, middle of amazing. That's where middle. I was considering, too. Yeah. Well, all right, then. With that said, now that we've got all the Kayaki songs up, we can move on to Sakura Zaka next. First off, with their debut single, Nobody's Fault. So. Okay. I am, um, I guess, the resident order pitch that I want to be here. <laughs> um, I have to say, out of the two singles she sent it, nobody's fault. Like, yes, it's the debut single. Yes, they were just trying out, trying something new. But I think out of the two singles she sent it, two single A that she sent it, Nobofa is the weaker of the two. Mm. That being said, though, Lumen Kiss is best A side. Um, <laughs> B side, sorry, not A side. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I get what you meant. I get what you meant. I know how much you really like that particular B side, Blue Moon Kiss. Uh, I've grown to love all the others. They're, like, specifically Nadikwe. Like, I'm not and will not be bothered. To do five, I think. Oh yeah, Nadekoi Nadekoi was such a good one for for Karin to center that. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Nadekoi is also the song with the with the most views on in the music video as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, I agree. I agree. Personally, I think. I don't know what to do. I like this song. I hope she said this. Like, I don't think it should go above dice. I'll agree with that. Mm. We we want to I... put it in in like okay then. Uh, that's the wrong cover as well. Oh, is, oh, okay, okay. Uh, this one, okay. That one, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Gotcha. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. Mm-hmm. Even though, like, I only listen to nobody's fault or how I put it, management fault. No, that's my own personal joke there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember. I remember. Um, I only listen to nobody's fault a couple of times and each time I'm like okay this is just an okay song and I think I think it was Nazakoi that I liked a lot better than actual actually nobody's fault no yeah yeah I agree I've 
I've talked about it as well. I think Nazikoi is probably my favorite song on the single. To be honest, as I said, moving Kiss superiority. <laughs> <laughs> and nothing um, wrong with that. Uh, yeah. Like, with all of the songs now, like, now that the background members from, like, each single, so fourth single, are centered thing, I think... <sighs> no offense to her, right? I love her. I think... The same goes with the next single, just that um, I kind of liked it more when the numbers. Like, the first Fax Live had both nobody for and then get sent to like three members, three other members. And I think those were more memorable than times that I've seen them into it. Like, yes. Her charisma on stage is great. Her expressions on stage is great. I think I just want to change. Fuck that. Somebody let Takamoto Yui and the Sakura aid. That would be nice. That would be nice. Uh. All right. Mm-hmm. So next up we have a uh, ban then. So So yeah, I would definitely agree. I'd say out of the two uh single songs that uh Hikaru has centered so far, this one is definitely stronger of the two of them. Mm. I think second single was also the start of the Mori app and then that's about to keep up there, I guess you can say. Mm. Like, until the two of them have become closer ever since the Motoyori, I guess. The band and the Motoyori, I guess. And, mm-hmm. God. They're first just mentioning men's name now. It's like, mm. I'm missing them. I'm missing it's it's okay, it's okay. I, I totally get how you feel. But uh, yeah, I agree. Like as I said, I'll, nobody's fun. Um Ban is the more memorable song. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And the B side as well is solid as well. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. Big, personally this in the photo is a step up. Okay. Then again. No, <laughs> no, nah, nah, I get what you mean because, yeah, I think because kind of we've talked about the fact that after their debut is when they can start to kind of branch out more and try some new things, you know, how can we expand upon what we've already like set up for ourselves? And Guzu no Kota, I think, was a really good step forward to like. For, for Kiting Center songs specifically, especially looking at the music video because not only is the song very emotional, but they were able to make a, a really good, really interesting uh, and believable story for for the music video with Kiting portraying a character who has uh, a crush on a female classmate. So like, so yeah, I, I really liked that. And and then also Omota Yori Mo Sabishikunai, which uh, I've talked about with the previous single with Buddies. I wasn't the biggest fan of that, but I feel like this one was definitely a step up for showing more of like what what Tenchan can do as a center. And it, it matched more of her energy, I feel like, than compared to Buddies. I also, like at this point, as we said, there is been singles in a row. And she said on, I think it was Songs of Tokyo, like she felt more comfortable to be herself when she's not centering the song. And I think that really does show in Amata Yori Mo Um, when she's in the second row, that particular song. Um, and like, 
Kung ito yari mo, hindi ko na just a fun song in general. You just see the language just. It have is. Fun. It is. It's fun. It's really cute too. Yes. And idols who can rap. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> we love rapping idols. Mm-hmm. Yes, we do. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I would um, I would personally put Ban in the in the nice category somewhere. I put it in the nice category too. Okay, because I was going to say for me, I was either going to put it in the nice or the amazing category personally. For me, from the times that I've listened to it, um, and then for Cotting's song. Just specifically, I really like that song. So I'm, but but just with Bon as the single itself for the main song. I, if you're, we're all saying nice, amazing. I guess it would go somewhere in the nice I think category. And then before we go on to the next. A single. I have to say, the next two singles are on you guys because I have not listened to them at all. So, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd okay, say. So, I'd, so, so, where are we putting Ben? Where are we, are I'd we putting? Say, I'd say. I'd say above Cassie. Got it. Personally. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I think Nagaradama was a step. Oh yeah, like, definitely. This was definitely like change of center, change of direction, and I think yeah, it was at it was at this point where I feel like they were probably like, okay, we kind of see the direction where we're trying to go in now. Let's go all out for this next one. Let's give something really different. And and Nagaredama really is like it's just like compared compared to the last two, like obviously they're. There is this kind of, there is a lot more, like, power and energy to ban compared to Nobody's Fault. But, like, with Nagaraidama, it's just, like, a, it was that yeah. is that is a whole ton of energy compared to ban. I think, as well, like, nobody expected Tamura Ono to be center. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, Tamura... Tama- I think Hono was literally just explosive as the center. I mean, kind of like the song's title in English. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, Stray mm-hmm. bullet. Uh-huh. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like, most people, I guess, when this song was initially announced, they did, like, the lineup specifically, they didn't think Hono was sent in material just yet, but like when you saw her perform in that position, it was personally to me, it was so much more than I expected. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I I agree too. It was. It definitely blew my expectations just like out of the water. To have girls like who have sent it before, like kind of uh, sort of flanking her and be the side as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And this up behind, what the number this up behind. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Kind of. I think. I think Honda was in safe hands with that triangle. Or mm-hmm. That triangle movement is. Um, the B side, the B sides. Yes, like, the B side. Dead end. Like, come on. The, the best he could have sent the song. Actually, it no. is. It is. It is really good. I would. I would definitely agree with arguing for that. Yeah, dead end is the the best he got center song that we have gotten so far. Okay, I say that, and my actual favorite he could have song is X single. <laughs> Ah, okay, like, okay, okay, okay. Considering I spent weeks on the music video analysis for that song. Anyway. Yeah, no, I, I get what you mean. Yeah, that one was really good too. But yeah, Dead End was really good. Uh, Mugo no like, Utsu was really good. Uh, Sonia, fact, Utsukushiki Nervous, those two are really good as well. The fact that mine and Steve's 
all shoes and just act like I was after graduate and acted as a single. Yeah. Tears running down my cheek right now. Yeah, yeah I, I would I, I would I would probably put this in the amazing category. Amazing. Yep. So we're both that or kind of other Oh, do you think so? Do you think this would go above that Akane? No, that's what I'm thinking. Should it go above that Akane or not? <laughs> like, definitely above Garawara. Like, I was going to say, would Garakane? you put it above Garawara? I would. Okay, okay. Above that Akane, I don't think so. Mm. That, that's... I mean, to be fair, with, with Darakane, you know, you only have the one song to compare it to. With, yeah. with Nagare Dama, you have several B-sides several backing it up as yeah. well. And the fact that Nagare Dama was like the first single units as well, with the Nathan Beer and On My Way, which is both like a solid song. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah, like right here. Below that. Mm. Mm, mm, well, well, let's put it here. We can say it's on like it's they're near the same, same level, level. We can yeah. say, yeah, okay. You know, like obviously, Darekane is a song that, like, you know, since since it is the only song we have, it really just needs to like, and it basically needs to stand on its own two feet because it's the only song we can compare oh, to it. Yeah. Other than aside from Nagare Dama, which is already strong on its own, but then it has several other strong B sides backing it up. And last, last up for the singles, we have Sami Dareyo. Sorry to Tenjam. But out of the seconds of the singles, like this is a. What's your chair Hmm. Um, I, I can understand what you. what you mean by this. However. I think if we're comparing, like, like, some of the other, like, Yamasaki Ten solo center songs that she's done, I'd personally say that this is her best one so far. I guess so. And it's not the only one, either. Like, Koi Gazette's Metsuru I think, goes above Sami Dario, in my opinion. Mm. Just because it went in a different direction to Sami Dario. Again, with the units as well. There's only two units, I think. <laughs> it's with the back, row number seven. Hmm. A side wise, I wouldn't say it's the best one. A single as a whole, I think definitely, definitely up there. No, yeah, definitely, because we've got Boku no Dilemma, which is Watanabe Risa's uh, kind of send-off graduation song. And then you, you mentioned it earlier, Sakan Kyori. I, I spent so many weeks on that. On that. Just, like, <laughs> scrubbing through the music video. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm going to plug myself to it, please. If you have the time. <laughs> You have the fun to check it, check out, the, check out my article <laughs> on it. I, I, I put Sami Dario as a song on OK as well. But on OK. Oh, would you put it at OK? I'd honestly put it at nice. Like, it's not. If it wasn't for the beat sides, I wouldn't go back, back to it. Mm. <laughs> Well, again, this is me coming from, like, my personal taste and, like, how I really feel like this is, like, a very strong center song for Yamazaki Ten on her own. That's true. Like, obviously, and... obviously after this, we see, you know, not only how much Tenchan is capable as a center, but, like, with her and uh, Hikaru, with their dual center for Masatsukesu, we see just the dynamic that they hold as dual centers, the two of their... Yeah you know, opposing energies, essentially, of how they operate as centers, clashing together and working so well together with that, but, like, judging them apart, like, on their own of, like, 
what I feel like encapsulates a lot of that energy that Tenshan has. Like, it's it's between Omota Yorimo and then this song, Samidare Yo. And I think as well with like the lack of star power, I guess they have. Like this was this is final A side. What of the biggest is final A side. Hmm. The single pretty much was without Sagai Yuka. Um, she was only there for Book of the Dilemma. Obviously, it was this is send off song. Mm-hmm. Um, but aside from that, I think I do have to agree with you. At the same time, it's not a memorable song for me personally. Then again, more members from um, the main lineup for the first time, like the Sanitary, it was Umer, Arena, and Sativito. Hmm. And Mori Arena was the only Sakura 8 for the first time. That kind of stuff for the album as well. Uh, yeah. All in all, A side wise, I can come to a compromise and put it at the bottom of this. Yeah, because I was gonna make I was gonna make a final argument. If you had to compare Sami Darayo as an A side to Nobody's Fault as their debut A side, between the two of them, which do you like more? I see. Obvious <laughs> bias you... for Hikaru aside. <laughs> I, I, it's equal for me, to be honest. Well, yeah, it's as yeah. equally forgettable for me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no offense to the kind of better. But... Of course, of course, of course. We we love the two of them in Masatsukesu. Like again, that's such. Yeah. That was so the good. Al- the album. The album kind of. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Would I put Tami Dario above Bam and Nazaretama? Not necessarily. No, yeah, yeah. I'd say I'd say bottom of nice is a good middle ground. So much flack in my comments. You know, that's my opinion. I don't care. I don't care. I yeah, don't yeah. Care. Please, everyone, just remember this is just our personal opinions of this. These are, you know, factoring in, you know, our personal taste and stuff of how we feel about not just Sakura Zaka but also Kiaki Zaka, what we like about each of their songs, so you know. We can we can all agree to disagree, you know? Just be just be respectful about it. It's like you're also taking into consideration not just one lesson, but three people's collective opinions. Um, yeah. And and even and... and even in Steve's case, you know, he doesn't have that many strong <laughs> opinions about some of Sakura Zaka's mo- more yeah. recent stuff. Although, I would say personally, Steve, definitely recommend you checking out Nagaredama and Masatsuke Suk because those two, okay. those two songs are just so good. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah, that wraps it up. So... A little bit shorter runtime, but you know we had fewer yeah. singles to go through rather than with AKBs, which took True. like two hours. It really did take two hours. Now, <laughs> be- be- before we end this video, um, I will be making my own personal AKB single tier list, um, <laughs> because I have a lot of hot takes and oh definitely have different Steve... opinions of songs. <laughs> To be honest, I think Steve was the bigger AKU was the bigger AKB back than I was. So, <laughs> so he has stronger I, opinions of AKB. I have a lot of stronger opinions on certain songs. <laughs> <laughs> and then okay, with that, then. I will also be creating my own kind of adding my own tears in there, changing some stuff around. Ah, uh, okay, okay, gotcha. <laughs> Whereas some people not has- like. <laughs> I might actually do a separate like, tier list of like every single Kiki Sakura Zaka song because mm-hmm. I am in the mood for it. Probably not today. Probably not by the end of this week because I am going away tomorrow, mm-hmm. I think. So. Oh, right. Yeah, you mentioned that to me. Yeah. That's why I kind of wanted to do the Kiki Sakura 
seen this now before I go. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this was fun. Thanks for coming on and joining, Steve. So thank and you. Definitely going to look for forward me. to seeing what your hot takes are for AKT. <laughs> <laughs> I'm eager to hear of those too. To be honest. I guess, spoiler alert, there will be a tier list with trash and songs that shouldn't exist. Oh boy! Okie dokie then! <laughs> well, alright, so look forward to that, I guess, you guys. And, uh, yeah, that'll wrap up this video, so if you like this video, be sure to leave a like, comment down below, and again, be respectful because these are our personal opinions. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more content and more tier lists coming up. So we'll see you guys in the next video. So until then, bye-bye. See you guys. Bye.